Welcome to A Word From The Wise, the Soul Wise podcast. We come to you the beginning of each month where we talk about products that we do, uh, news in the industry, and uh, just anything that we think you might be interested in. You can hear us on Spotify, Amazon Music, we can be seen on video, on YouTube, uh, or just find us wherever you normally get your podcasts from. Hello everybody and welcome to the Word from the Wise podcast with Soulwise. This week it is again me, myself, Louise Barrett, along with Daniel Coombs from our tech support and we're going to talk about the Q Wireless products. Uh, they are made by a company um, called Wireless Instruments. The brand then of this range is Q Wireless and we have the Q Spot, the Q Max and the other one yeah <laughs> which doesn't seem to have like a little range to it does it but it's a, there's a there's the xrl and the xra yeah, yeah. um so basically then uh, what's the difference um well the difference between these individual things just in terms of the q spot and the q max the q spot is an omnidirectional yeah. uh, mobile antenna whereas the q max is directional which if you're not aware, um, it essentially just means the omnidirectional antenna has its antenna operating in a 360 degree radius all around it, um, whereas the directional is concentrating its signal in one direction in a much more focused beam, so it's stronger, but obviously it's it's directional. It's only one direction. It's a bit more limited. So it's a bit it more needs... focused, but yeah. you, you need to know where it's pointing to to and, make it worthwhile having. Yeah, it. and it ideally needs an obstructed line of sight as well, yeah. which means that in probably most scenarios it's not going to be convenient to use. But if, if, if it is convenient to use, then it will work very well. Yeah. So looking at them, they all look very different. Now for people listening, we'll explain what they look like, but for people viewing, it it, it will be very obvious. We have the Q spot, which is the uh, Omni one, which is quite tall. Um, and that is wall and pole mounted. It comes with the brackets. Um, it just comes with a normal metal L-shaped bracket and some uh, some clips to go through that. Uh, it's the standard antenna bracket that, isn't it, that we do with a lot of uh, our, things yeah uh, and this one the bottom comes off and that's how you fit the teltonica routers in i suppose we should have said that at the beginning shouldn't we really that these are specifically for housing teltonica routers and they do specific ones for specific routers yeah. so for instance this is a 240s which is for the rup 240 the RUP 241 and probably the, the new RUP 200, 200 yeah. that's coming through. And the RUP 230 if you still have one of them. Uh, yeah, well that's yeah. going back a bit, that, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, you, so you fit the router inside, it's got the short cables, because obviously that's the best thing for them, isn't it? Yeah. Um, and then you can mount that um, as you go along. What do you think the advantage are, advantages are really of having an enclosure rather than a separate antenna in your router inside? Um, there are a few. What one that you've just mentioned, obviously, is the fact that if you've got the router literally just inside, effectively the antenna yeah. with very short cables, that means you're going to be experiencing significantly less loss of the signal gain than you would if you had the antennas, say, on a five meter cable run up outside with the router inside. Yeah. You, you, so you were getting a much stronger signal coming into the router by doing that. Um, and what you would then do is run an Ethernet cable down from the router into either directly into a computer inside or into a switch or access point or something. And, and will that Ethernet cable power it as well? Does it do power yes, every Ethernet? Yes, so uh, under the Ethernet cable you won't have any loss of speed or anything like that. Yeah. And then that's also how you power the whole system because oh, the yeah. Teltonica routers they can be powered by PoE, which is power over Ethernet, yeah. through uh, one of the LAN ports, the LAN 1 ports. Um, all you would need is just like a, a PoE injector, anywhere from 9 to 30 volts. Uh, we do a kit 
that is a hydrate second, that kind of thing. And we list it as an accessory on the product pages as exactly, well, don't we? Yeah. So you don't have to go hunting for it. It is, it is there in the um, things you might want to consider bit yeah. of the page. And it means you can be quite a bit more versatile in terms of where the antenna is mounted because obviously with a, with a more conventional setup of having a router inside and an external antenna outside, the maximum recommended cable length for that kind of scenario is only about five meters. And you can go a bit longer than that if you really need to, like maybe up to 10 meters or something. But you'll be obviously running into a lot of signal gain with that. Whereas with one of these antennas, because the only limit is how far the PoE power can reach down the PoE cable, the Ethernet cable, which is about 40 to 45 meters, let's say, for 24 volts, um, then that that gives you obviously up to like 40 meters of leeway of being able to get the system as high up as possible to get it into the best possible That's got to be the major position. benefit, isn't it, yeah. really, is a yeah. lot less less a lot less loss in the cables. Yeah, and that yeah. means you can you can get it higher up and so the higher the better in terms of getting signal. So, yeah. so yes. I noticed on the directional one, which is a square flat looking beast, that there's actually an omni antenna with it as well. Yeah. So what's that all about? That's Why is that? for the Wi-Fi side of it. Right. So obviously all, all these are designed to support a certain uh, model of Teltonica router. And yeah. almost, all, almost all the Teltonica routers do Wi-Fi as well. Outside, oh, right. Some of them doing other things like GPS and Bluetooth, which these also support. Yeah. Um, and for the Wi-Fi side of it, they expect that you're likely to be wanting that as an omnidirectional output rather yeah. than directional. So that's a little omnidirectional um, antenna that goes alongside it just for just for the Wi-Fi. And then the mobile side of it is built into the panel and that's directional. Now that is a removable omni antenna. So could you put a different omni on or a, a, or a Wi-Fi directional antenna on there? Yeah, you could do. Yeah. You want to make sure it's still uh, sealed and watertight. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got something designed for outdoors, yeah, yeah exactly. definitely. Yeah. yeah, that can be done. Yeah, and that one comes with quite a chunky mounting bracket, so that one uh, is, I would say that's wall mount only, isn't it, really? With it being directional anyway, I suppose. Yeah, you, you could put it on a pole, but you would have to be quite strong. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you need so to have a sturdy heavy, type heavy of pole. Antenna. Yeah, it's a heavier one, yeah. And this is the same bracket that is used for the XRA and the XRL as yeah. well. You can sort of tell by looking at it, it's slightly adjustable. So a... what's different about the XRA and the XRL? Now they look like the normal directional one, but it's a lot bigger. Yeah, so obviously we, we mentioned earlier that each of the Q-Spot and the Q-Max antennas are designed for a certain Teltonica router. So you've got the A240S for the RUT240 model, which yeah. is quite small. And then all most of the Toltan routers are different sizes from each other. So the RUT950 is bigger than that. The RUT X11 is bigger than the RUT950 and so on. Yeah. And so they're each designed with a certain frame of router inside in mind. Whereas with the XRA and the XRL, they're just putting that aside and making it big enough to cope with any of the Teltonica routers. And now, so. is the antenna inside a higher gain, bigger antenna? Yeah. Yeah. So it's about using a, the bigger antenna with any of the routers that you particularly, it yeah. doesn't, doesn't yeah. matter. And the, uh, the XRA also supports uh, the GPS and Bluetooth side of things, whereas yeah. I believe the XRL is only mobile and Wi-Fi. Yeah. Okay. dokie. Is there anything else you need? So if somebody comes and buys the router and the antenna from us, um, as far as I'm thinking, is it just cable, is it really? Yeah, the and antenna And what will that terminate comes... to inside your house or your building? Yeah, so the, um, the router comes with other things it would need and the antenna comes with all the mounting side of it. Yeah. But then to go alongside it, you would need ethernet cable, at least two runs probably. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the PoE injector, the power of Ethernet injector, which is like a little box that you would plug into a power supply. And then you'd run an Ethernet cable from the box up to the antenna on the router, which gives it the power and the network connection. And then you probably connect another cable into that box and just have that running into a switch or something. Okay. Is there any scenarios that you can think of that people have talked to you about, about where they would use 
these types of devices. Well, the so versatile, they can really be used anywhere. They're, they're good for just home domestic use. Uh, you know, it's a great antenna to use with the Teltonic router and there's domestic Teltonic routers like the RUT241. Um, and then also the fact that they are, you know, watertight, they're IP67. You can use them in coastal scenarios, you can use them on boats, uh, in places where you might struggle to get an antenna in a good position with the five metre limitation of having it run from a router. They are more of a permanent they build are, though, they aren't are they? Permanent. They're not, the, yeah, not something you would take up and down no, normally, no, would you? No. Unless you were But if you secure it properly. Yeah. Okay. Um, Somebody asked me the other day about antennas, how are they powered? And I thought, that's a bit of a silly question. And then I thought, well, actually, no, it's not a silly question if you don't know the answer. No. So explain to us then how an antenna, how an antenna is powered. It's, it's not powered in of itself. You yeah. don't have well, to that's, that's kind of what my yeah. thinking was. And I'm thinking, but not everybody knows that no. sort of thing, do they? Yeah. No, you, so you don't, you don't run power to you. In this kind of scenario, you'd be running the power to the router that's inside it yeah. and then by nature of having the antenna be connected into the router those antennas are then powered into use. Yeah and it just collects the waves then doesn't it? Yeah. From within the air. Um, how secure are they uh, waterproofness wise? So you you very, alluded just, to the fact they're 67, yeah, they're yeah. 67 that, and that's quite high so isn't it really? High, yeah. That's the one below I suppose marine grade isn't it? Proper high marine grade. Yeah. So you would as you said you could use it for in, you probably wouldn't use it out at sea for instance but um no but for a canal boat or something like that should yeah. be fine shouldn't exactly, it yeah. yeah uh and i suppose the only other thing to question that I, that i considered but we've kind of covered anyway really is is how how different it is from having just your normal antenna so it, it, it we do the antennas from pointing for instance and if you were had an x pole 121 that looks very much like these sorts of things i suppose it's it's really it's just about getting the router in size and closer is is, yeah. is the main selling point for having the enclosure isn't it really well yeah not only are these antennas a bit stressed stronger they have a bit of a high db gain inherently yeah than a lot of the pointing ones including the x-poles but also the fact that there's less loss means in real terms, they're also a lot stronger as well because obviously you can say the X pole has a certain or any any router, uh, any antenna has a certain dB gain, but then if it runs a five meter cable that's coming from it, you're never going to see that dB gain. It's always going to be lower than it says, yeah. whereas that's not the case with these. And I suppose um, if you don't particularly readily need access to the router it's quite a practical way of doing it really isn't it if you want ready access to the router often you might be better off potentially using a, a using separate a more conventional yeah, and yeah the, system, more yeah. conventional that's probably the best way of putting it really excellent well thank you very much daniel is there anything else you think we ought to need to know about them uh, i think that might covers it really covered, doesn't right? it yeah i'm just thinking of questions that people have asked in the past about them but uh, yeah i think that generally covers it um, anyone who's watching will notice that we uh, haven't got our decanter on the table. So I think as, as we close and say thank you for watching, well, we should maybe have a drink. It's, it's Friday afternoon, it's isn't it? Summer holiday season. What do season. you reckon? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm on holiday next week. Ideal. Well, thank you very much, everybody, for watching and for listening. And uh, if you are on podcasts, obviously we're available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all the other places where you can get your podcasts from. If you want to see what we've been talking about today, that's on our YouTube channel and the video will appear on all of the Q Wireless product pages on our website. So thank you very much. Thank you for watching or thank you for listening, whichever you chose to do. Uh, if you normally listen, by all means, come and have a look at us over on YouTube if you want to scare yourselves. If not, just find us wherever you get your normal podcasts from. Thank you very much. See you next month.